What's up guys and welcome back to another creature feature episode here on Shark Bites. It's been a little while since we did a creature feature so I thought I'd just throw one in and surprise you all. Today's creature feature has been suggested quite a while ago by Lexi K and she'd love to hear some pretty cool facts about the broad nose seven gill shark. Before we start though if you enjoy these creature features please do give the video a like it makes a huge difference every time you click that thumbs up button and it's really appreciated by me. Okay right broad nose seven gills let's go. The broad nose seven gill shark also known as the blunt nose seven gill is a medium-sized shark species belonging to the cow shark family, one of the most ancient families of shark. The cow sharks are categorized by their additional or additional pair of gill slits. For example, the six gill shark is also in the cow shark family, but we're going to talk more about the gill stuff later. Broadnose seven gills are generally found at around 50 meters deep, but are pretty regularly encountered by divers in South Africa and along sections of the US Pacific coast. They've been found at deeper depths though on continental shelves at around 600 meters deep. They range in size from around four to seven feet, although the largest one on record came in at a whopping 10 foot long. Seven gill sharks are pretty skilled hunters feeding on a variety of different prey species including bony fish, other sharks and rain mammals. Generally the younger individuals tend to feed on bony fish and other small sharks and then as they get older their diet shifts to marine mammals. Also their teeth are pretty awesome too. So their upper jaw is lined with jagged teeth designed for grasping and latching onto prey and then their lower jaw is lined with comb shaped teeth designed for cutting and tearing flesh. I mean look at those gnashers. Although these sharks look pretty slow, right? So how would they catch a speedy marine mammal like a seal? It's tough to say exactly on this one and researchers are still trying to figure it out, but supposedly there have been some observations of interesting behaviors. The first is that seven gill sharks have been seen spy hopping. This is the behavior where they are vertical in the water column and they've popped their heads out the water to have a look round, like you can see in this diagram here. Great whites also perform this behavior and we have loads more pictures of great whites doing it than seven gills, so you can kind of see it in these images here, but it's thought that great whites do this to try and see where seals are. As to how the seven gills actually catch their prey is still being discovered. Some research has shown that seven gills are less active during the day and spend most of their time towards the bottom. It's thought that this might be because the seven gills want to stay hidden in the murky waters towards the bottom so that they can sneak up and ambush their prey at the surface. So there's some research there that suggests seven gills are these lone stealth hunters, but there's also some other interesting observations as well. It has been suggested that seven gill sharks hunt cooperatively. When tackling larger prey species like bigger seals, some people claim to have observed seven gill sharks swimming in a tight circle around that prey, preventing its escape. Slowly the circle becomes tighter and tighter before one or two seven gill sharks move in and latch onto that prey, which causes all the other individuals to just pile on in and devour it. Pretty gnarly. The jury is still out on that one though, as it's pretty hard to get natural observations of seven gill sharks doing this. It's pretty likely that they are somewhat social sharks, but as to whether they hunt in groups, We'll have to wait and see. Speaking of that spy hopping behavior and the similarities between great whites and seven gills, something really interesting went down in South Africa back in 2017. I've spoken to you guys before about how great white sharks disappeared from sections of South Africa five years ago, particularly around Seal Island and False Bay. Go and check out that video that we did on killer whales and great white sharks, by the way. You can click this link here and give it a watch. There's some awesome footage in that video. <laughs> Anyway, it turned out that seven gill sharks actually started to replace the great white sharks that had disappeared from those areas. Researchers had been studying great white sharks around Seal Island for around 18 years, and they had never seen a single seven gill shark in any one of their surveys. But when the great white sharks disappeared in 2017, the seven gills started cropping up in the surveys and grew considerably in their numbers. And what likely happened here was that the seven gill sharks realized that they weren't gonna get eaten by the great white sharks because they disappeared from those areas and decided that they were gonna fill the great white's ecological niche. They basically feed on the same or similar prey items as great white sharks in those areas, so they essentially replaced them as the top predator in that food web. It gave the researchers some pretty valuable insights into what might happen if you were to lose an apex predator from the marine environment. If the conditions are right, it can be replaced by another predator. I think that's really cool, and in the words of Jeff Goldblum, Life, uh, finds a way. Now, I mentioned to you earlier about this shark's gills. And yep, you've guessed correctly, it does have seven pairs of gill slits. It's even in the Guinness Book of World Records for most gill slits on a shark. That is, of course, if you're not counting the gill slits on the Megalodon in the Jason Statham Meg film. How many gill slits has he got? <laughs> He's got eight gill slits. He has got eight gill slits. Uh <laughs> Stupid film. 
Anyway, gill slits. Having seven is pretty impressive to be fair, considering the majority of other shark species are limited to only having five. A question I get asked all the time though is why do seven gill sharks have seven gills? It is a great question to be fair, and unfortunately it's one we just don't have an answer for yet. There are plenty of other shark species that occupy the same habitats as seven gills who do just fine only having five gills, so it's not giving them any noticeable advantage. It could just be down to being a really odd quirk of evolution. It might also be down to the fact that this family of sharks, the hexanchophorus, Forms is one of the oldest of them all. They can be traced back all the way to the early Jurassic period, 195 million years ago. And they've barely changed in that time either. They still have the seven gills and the singular dorsal fin towards the back of the shark. That's compared to most of the sharks who have two dorsal fins, the primary and the secondary, with the primary being towards the middle section of the shark. Seven gill sharks have also been responsible for a few attacks on humans down the years. The International Shark Attack file lists the seven gill shark as having bitten five people since records began, none of which were fatal. But there have been a number of suspected seven gill shark bites on people in the last 10 years or so. One of which was this junior doctor in New Zealand who was bitten on the leg supposedly by a seven gill shark. He fought it off, walked back to the beach, stitched his own leg up, and then went to the pub for a pint before eventually being convinced to go to the hospital. <laughs> What a legend. <laughs> Looking at this from the other side though, seven gill sharks were absolutely hammered by fisheries in the 20th century. In the San Francisco Bay Area, the seven gill shark stock was thought to be completely depleted by the 1980s as people were fishing it for its meat and liver. This isn't good news for seven gills as the areas around San Francisco are thought to be nursery grounds for this species where they can spend the first few formative years of their lives. And if you wipe out all the juveniles, you've got a major population decline problem on your hands. But just as a treat for all you shark bites fans, I've decided to invite my friend Megan Holst, who's actually researching these sharks in San Francisco Bay. Hi, Shark Bites. My name is Megan Holst. I work on seven gill sharks in San Francisco Bay. I'm studying them for my PhD dissertation here. And San Francisco is a really cool area for seven gill sharks to study them because in the United States, it's the only pupping ground that we've identified um, where we can readily find the juveniles. They're normally on the coastal shelf off of our coastline, and they also go to super deep water up to like 500 meters. But in San Francisco Bay, it averages about two meters deep or actually three meters deep. And so we can um, really get really good access to them in this like really crucial part of their life stage that we uh, don't normally get to see. And I think we've only identified two pupping grounds for this species worldwide. Like we can, we have seven gills worldwide, just like white sharks. Uh, but the only pupping grounds that I know that we've been able to find are in Argentina and South America and in San Francisco Bay in the US. Uh, so I feel super fortunate San Francisco Bay is my backyard and surprisingly nobody's looking at them. Um, I don't know why they're so cool. There's so many of them. And one of the things that I'm looking at right now is, is trying to identify for sure, like what these, what the newborn sharks need. Uh, we thought that they relied more on like teleost fish, like bony fish and maybe some shrimps. Uh, we never suspected in any case that they're preying on mammals, for example, uh, but I've been looking at some of their gut contents and I actually am finding some like fur in their stomach, which is so crazy. Uh, I think it's probably like scavenging. I don't expect a little like tiny shark is going up and like taking bites out of sea lions, but who knows? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> Nobody knows. And the, the coolest part is that we're like finding out for the first time. So um, yeah, seven gill sharks are really cool and follow me along so that you can see what we find out about seven gill sharks. You can follow me on Twitter at Meg Holst, M-E-G-H-O-L-S-T. Thanks, Meg. So there we go, guys. There's your seven gill shark creature feature. What was your favorite seven gill shark fact that you learned today then? Do you have any other seven gill shark facts that I haven't mentioned? If so, I want to hear all about them in the comments. Oh, also, if you want to check out more about what Meg does, then make sure you go and check out her podcast, which she runs with her friend Amani. It's called The Sharkpedia Pod. It's a lot of fun. And you can find it on all major streaming services. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like. It really helps out the channel. And don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Bites channel below by clicking that big red subscribe button. Also, turn that notifications bell on as well and that way you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time.